Hi there, now think about this for a moment. Pretty much every big decision we make in our daily lives involves the top-down analysis approach. For example, if you're looking to buy a house or an apartment, first thing you do is look for an area that you want to be in, a town or a city. Now you may need to consider other amenities like the transport amenities, how far you are from the station and so forth. You may need to look at schools or local shops or businesses. So once you've decided on the city or town, you drill down even further to the street and the roads that would be suitable. Then you look at the properties that are available within your price range based on other criteria such as the number of bedrooms, the number of bathrooms, everything that you need to accommodate your family. Now once you find a property that ticks all these boxes, it comes down to value. Is it good value? If it is and you can afford it, well then your chances are you're going to buy it. Same, a basic approach applies to when you're booking your annual vacation. First of all, you're likely to choose a continent, Asia, Europe, or whatever. Then you drill down to a country. Then you drill down to a town based on other criteria. I want to be near a beach, or I want to do some sightseeing, or possibly could be a sporting holiday. Now, these are crucial checks. These are crucial checks that need to be ticked off by looking at the bigger picture before we decide to purchase. And we need to do this exact same top-down analysis approach when it comes to our trading decisions. And that's exactly what I want to talk to you today about. Okay, so before I get into the nitty-gritty on why the top-down analysis approach is so important, I want to remind you to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already done so. We have hours and hours of content that I've put together for you over the last couple of years. If you subscribe, it'll all be there in one place for you to view at your own time. Don't forget to hit that little bell notification. That way you're going to get notified the moment my next video has been released. You can follow us on Instagram and of course on Facebook. And indeed, if you follow us on Facebook, you can join me live every Monday at 2 p.m. where I discuss the markets looking for trading opportunities. So let's think about this top-down analysis approach with something you may be more familiar with, say the stock market. Now let's look at the largest companies in terms of market value at the moment. So that's Apple shares and Amazon shares. Now most of us, I know, I think it's fair to say what these companies do. Many of you will own Apple devices. Some of you will love it. Some of you, of course, will hate it. I don't want to go there. That's a personal decision for whatever reason you may have. But I think it's fair to say we all know what these companies do. Now, let's assume you want to invest in Apple or Amazon shares. Well, the first thing you're going to do is look at the stock price. Then the chances are you're going to look to see what that stock price has been doing in the recent past. Is it at the top of a recent range? Has momentum been moving the price up or is the price now making an aggressive move down from the recent highs? You may even delve deeper into the company accounts. Has the company been making profits? Is it paying dividends? Is the outlook in terms of sales positive going forward? Now, all this is top-down analysis approach from the fundamental background, but also when you're looking at a chart, we're looking from the technical background, and that's sort of what we're doing. We're looking at what the price has done in the recent past. You have to decide now if the price is good, good value, in which case you buy it, or indeed if it's expensive, in which case you'll hold off and think about it for a time. So it's what the price has been doing in the past that's relevant to what we'll be doing now. Think about it for a moment. What's happened in the last five minutes in Apple shares or Amazon shares really is insignificant to what it's been doing in the bigger picture. And that's exactly why we need to use this top-down analysis approach. Now, as technical traders, we're always looking at this prices to see what the price has done in the past. That's what technical analysis basically is. It gives us clues as to what prices may do in the future. So to gain an edge in the market, we need to analyze a pair from the top-down analysis approach. Think about it. Dollar against the Japanese yen, for example. If it's coming off a major level of support or major level of resistance for the weekly and the daily chart, it'd be madness not to know that. Certainly if you're trading off a smaller time frame or shorter time frame, like the five or the 15 minute chart. Now another key point that I think a lot of Forex traders struggle with is that they don't know where an individual currency is in relation to the other currencies on the grander scale of things over the bigger picture. Now in order to carve out our edge in the markets, 
Having an insight to this invaluable information, I think is like gold dust. Now, I'm gonna show you on the charts in a moment exactly how this fits into our top-down analysis approach, as well as look at individual currency pairs and see how the top-down analysis approach really helps in our technical analysis. Come on, let's have a look. Okay, so this is how I typically set up my charts when I'm trading the Forex market using the top-down analysis approach. So you can see here, we are looking at the Euro against the US dollar. I have four time frames on my screen. I'm typically trading off the 15 minute chart. I have that here in the top left. I have the one hour chart in the bottom left. I have the four hour chart top right and the daily on the bottom right. I will typically start my analysis on a particular currency pair by going to the higher time frame first. I look at the daily chart, pull up the daily chart. I look at my key levels of support and resistance. Best way to put in key levels of support and resistance on the daily is to go to the line chart. It ignores the wicks, the highs and the lows, just focuses on the closing price. Once you've done that on the daily, you also do that on the four hour as well. Back to the line chart and plotting in the key areas of support and resistance. Now, for example, if I am a trend continuation trader, I'm looking to get in on a trend. You can see here by looking at the four hour and the daily, the trend is clearly down. On the daily, you can see that the price has moved down from 118 down to the low of 114 and a half. And on the four hour, we're nicely trading below these moving averages. The trend is clearly down. So if I'm a trend continuation trader, I'm gonna be looking to enter these trades as a sell for the trend to continue down. Now, drilling down to the one hour, I see that the price has just moved up through these moving averages. We're actually coming into a level of previous support on the four hour, which could indicate a new resistance level on the one hour. Now, for example, I might wish to get in on a trend on a pullback, and this could be the exact pullback that I'm looking for. So I'll now drill down to the 15 minute chart and look for my specific entries looking for sell opportunities on the lower time frame, bearing in mind the higher time frame price action is pointing lower. But I'm also aware of the key levels of support and resistance. I can see here now that this 15 minute chart is gonna be coming into a level of resistance by looking out here on the daily and indeed on the four hour as well. So by having a clearer view of the bigger picture helps me get more accurate entries on the lower time frames. And also think about this. If I'm looking just at the 15 minute chart, I see momentum to the upside. I might be persuaded here now to be looking for buy entries. Indeed, it might be the right decision. But by looking at the higher time frames, I can see that this rally in the euro dollar at this moment in time could be coming in to some serious resistance to the upside. By looking at the daily, the four hour and indeed the one hour. So that could possibly keep me out of taking a long trade or a buy trade on the lower time frame. So here's an example in the dollar against the Japanese yen. At the moment, this market is looking very strong. We're up on the 15 minute, we're up on the one hour, we're nicely up on the four hour as well, trending up nicely. But then if we look at the higher time frame chart on the daily, take that out, you can see price is now at this key, key level of daily resistance. Heavily resisted back in November last year, June, March. This currency pair is really struggling to get past this level. Now, if you're just looking at the five and the 15 minute chart, or even the one hour chart, and you're not aware of what's going on in the bigger picture, you're opening yourself up to higher risk trades. It's always worth knowing what's going on on the bigger picture. The top-down analysis approach is crucial. Now, we talk about this all the time in our live streams. We stream around the clock, as you may know. We're always looking at the bigger picture first and then drilling down, looking for entries on the lower time frame, minimizing risk and getting us into only the higher probability trade setups. Now, I wanna end off by talking about this little indicator. Now, as we know, in markets trading, there's no such thing as a holy grail. However, if there was a holy grail, 
this would be it for me. This enables me to analyze each individual currency against all the other currencies at a glance on one single screen across multiple time frames. I can see here, color coding on the left, the British pound with all these blue squares across all the time frames, the five, the 15 minute, the one hour, four hour, and the daily. It's colored blue, meaning it's a strong currency. The Australian dollar, for example, the one below, red across all time frames, that's the weak currency. The Australian dollar is this orange line down here that's showing you weakness. The white line, British pound, showing me strength. This shows me the big picture of what's going on on the basket of currency pairs. And it tells me also that these currency pairs that are moving around together in the middle, maybe those currency pairs are not the pairs you should be trading at the moment. I rely on this for the basis of all my Forex trading. Now this tool is absolutely free to all our members. You can come and check it out at forexsignals.com. You can sign up for a seven day free trial if you wish, see what we've got. If you don't like it, you don't have to stay and it won't cost you a dime. Okay, so I hope you found that useful. I hope you realize now that using the top down analysis really is the only way to increase your success in the Forex market. As always, if you like my video, give me a thumbs up. If you didn't, give me a thumbs down. Don't forget to leave a comment. I'd love to hear what you've got to say. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you don't already do so and make sure you hit that little bell notification. You'll get notified the moment my next video has been released. Don't forget to follow me on Facebook at 2 p.m. London time every Monday. Till the next video, goodbye and happy trading.